I like clouds and I also like landscape paintings. I love the Pacific Northwest as well as the Southwest. And I'm going to be doing a series on cloud paintings. I'm working from a photograph that I took someplace in the Southwest. I don't remember exactly where it was. I believe it was Northern Arizona, but a storm was rolling in and I got the most amazing photos of clouds. So I have my computer screen set up And I can, I can um, look at the clouds in the original photograph blown up on my screen, which is really helpful. And then I have my um, canvas not far away. I've already drawn in the road. And the photo is helpful because it helps me with perspective and also reminds me of exactly what the clouds looked like. And of course, I, I'll, I will take some artistic freedom with this and I'll change the ground somewhat and the, my sky won't perhaps look exactly like the photo. The point is not to look just like the photo, the point is to use the photo for inspiration and especially for help with perspectives. I'm going to start out with my sky and for the sky I'm using cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, titanium white, and cerulean blue. And as I pointed out in other tutorials, I put down many, many layers for the sky. And the sky is the entire focus of this painting and so I'm going to be putting down several layers of various mixes of those colors and then I will go back and start working with the clouds. I start with just a little bit of water on my brush and then I will mix the cobalt blue with white. So it's fairly dark. And across the top of the painting I want it to be quite dark. And if I have a little bit too much water on my brush that's okay for this first first layer. I just want to make sure to get a good a good amount spread across the page. White is a nice mixing paint because it helps the paint to spread. There are also various mediums you can use to help the spreadability of paints. I'm using acrylic paints and for this painting I'm just using water. I'm not using any special mediums. Right now this is Actually, this is ultramarine blue. I think I said cobalt blue. It's ultramarine blue and white. The middle point, I'm kind of switching over now to cobalt blue and white. At this point I'm just wanting to make sure that the entire canvas is covered really well with paint. I'm using a number 8 filbert at this point. I could use a larger brush if I wanted to. That would help spread the paint a little more quickly. Between each layer each of these base layers, it's important to let it dry. And being acrylic, it, it will dry fairly quickly. Now towards the bottom, I'm using, I'm starting to switch over here to cerulean blue and white. Of course, these will all be blended much better with, with further layers. But the sky is always darker at the top and then fades down into a lighter color. I'll go back and darken up this area. A few more coats of paint will help that a lot.
Yeah, I'm running over my pencil lines down here a little bit, but that's that's all right because I'll remember where they were, and I have my. Um, this is, was just a guide for me so that I would remember that I don't need to run my sky all the way down. I could I could paint the entire canvas blue first and then go back and add my other colors on top. But I don't really need to do that. These are going to be very different. This is a dark gray and these will be shades of browns and oranges and things. Kind of make this look more like prairie grass with some little bit of shrubbery out there. So I'll start really lightening up my sky down here towards the bottom. Where the sky hits the horizon, it's usually quite light. And if it's real far away, it might even blend in with the, the horizon. Whatever's on the ground, it might even not be very distinct at all. And um, after it's dried a bit, it wouldn't really help to go over it when it's wet because it'll it'll just kind of smear it around and it may even, re you can sometimes even pull paint off of the canvas doing that. And I don't want that to happen. So I will now let it sit until it has dried. Okay, now using the same colors, I will add a new coat of paint. It's kind of a mix of ultramarine blue and cobalt blue up in this upper right corner and then across and then it's going to kind of fade down this way. I'm going to keep it sort of the same way I have it. The, the photo shows a sky that is really fairly deep blue. Just was quite pretty. That's why the clouds caught my eye. The clouds almost seem out of proportion but it, it actually looked like that as we were driving up the road. Sky and ground has a lot of depth to it, and that is why in painting with acrylics, you, it requires so many layers of paint. A little bit of white flowing through it is okay because that can look like a little bit of wispy clouds in the background. And again, I'm sort of lightening up a bit as I come down this way. I kind of like to let one one fade into the the one above and below and sort of scrub them around a little bit together. While the um, sky is drying, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the ground. I have some favorite colors that I use for the ground, and I'm going to fall back on those. Um, I use Burnt Umber, and um, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, sometimes a little bit of black. May throw in some green this time around, and some Cadmium Yellow. And just like the sky, I put on a base coat first. I don't really worry a whole lot about what it looks like because it's just merely the base. So I'll start with a large brush and I I didn't change my water because it's, it's just the ground which has a little bit of the same. I mean if there's a little bit of blue on my brush it's not going to hurt anything. Right now I'm just getting a base down so I'm I'll decide later really what I want to do with this ground exactly. I 
kind of like to just try different colors and then something will come to me usually as I as I paint I'll get a feel for if I want it to be more kind of like a prairie or more greenery or have it look like cliffs the painting sort of decides what it wants to become I don't mix my colors ahead of time. It just happens to be the way that I paint. I, sometimes I do if I if I want a specific color, but um, usually I just load my brush with a batch of colors at once. I put down all the colors that I know I'm going to be using, then I just kind of grab a little bit of each one and I start painting. And the ground ground has a lot of valleys and shadows and things to it and so this is that's why I like to paint in this particular manner because valleys and shadows will start revealing themselves to me and that kind of tells me what shape I want what features I want to have in my in my ground I may decide I might leave this part here fairly flat and make it look like grass is growing along there and then have a steeper bank along the side. I kind of decide those things as I go depending on what what pops out at me. So now that will dry. Okay, I would like to go over the sky one more time at least. I'll just keep laying down layers and blending until I am happy. Although a lot of this will be covered up with clouds, I, I want to make sure the base is right. Okay, now that will sit and dry for quite some time before I come back and do clouds. After letting my paint dry overnight, I can see that it has darkened enough that it's too dark. Higher quality paints darken less than lower quality paints, but they, they can all darken up some. And this is another reason for letting my base coat dry overnight. Um, that's the only way that I can really tell how it's going to look. So I need to um, go over it another time. I'm still using the same colors that I used before for my ground. So I'll just be adding another coat that's basically the same that just gives a bit a little bit more depth.
this hill starts right about here and is forward of course over all of this in the background so it'll be more distinct and slightly darker than these background areas these will almost fade into the sky when I'm finished And this will all be several layers as well. Just want to give the idea of some vegetation there at the top of the hill. There's a white line that runs along the side of the road that I'm going to put in now. Vegetation can come over it a little bit, so I want to add it at this point. I'm using a tiny, tiny dab of lamp black. It's actually uh, an acrylic paint by M. Graham and Company. And this needs to be fairly straight. And it'll be a little, just a slightly wider on this end than it will be out on this end. On By the time you get to this point, it really pretty much disappears. And it's the white line that runs along the side of the road, but it's not actually going to be stark, <clears throat> stark white because it wouldn't really look stark white to the eye way off in the distance. And even white off in nature is not really white, like clouds are not actually white. But it will become whiter as it gets further out this way. Because you want the brain to interpret it as the white line on the side of the road. So it can get fairly white out towards the end here. It's important that it be straight, so it could even be helpful <clears throat> to use a ruler. But I think this is fine. I can touch it up with a ruler later if I feel it's necessary. And the same thing on this side. And this side, this is going to be whiter because it's closer to us. And again, this one sort of disappears too as it goes around the corner here. There's just a little hint of just a dab like that. And then whiter down this way. The sun catches this one and in the photograph you can see that it's quite a bit whiter. I'm going to put this gold line in now so that when I go back and add my road, I won't have lost where that is. There are some side lines across here, which I don't have to worry about too much right now. I have the main line in, so I'll know where those dotted lines go. There'll be one here, and then the next one will be way out here, and then they will get closer together as you go off into the distance. It doesn't take a whole lot of detail for your brain to, to know what something is and interpret it as shrubbery. My road will be lamp black and a, a mix of lamp black and white.
and it is a blacktop road, but I don't want the eye to go right to that. I, I want the eye to be kept up here. The road is an important part of the painting, though, too. It's what gives it an interesting perspective. I remember seeing this when, as we were driving down the road in northern Arizona. And I jumped out of the car and got this photo. I thought it was really interesting. I have a little bit more water in my brush than I need to, but that's that's all right because I'll be going back over all of this. This puts a nice base down for me. This is a nice brush for working with straight lines. It's, it's a Grumbacher brush, number three bright. I'm going to drip there. Bright meaning that it's straight across on the tip, which is very important for working in straight lines like this. Once I get my edges, I can um, be a little freer with my brush strokes, but I want to make sure I have a good edge on here. Got too much water on there, it almost looks like watercolor. But uh, again, I'll be putting more layers down, so that that's okay. Being that it's a blacktop road, it absorbs most of the light, so there's not really much reflection on the road. But there can be areas that are slightly lighter. I can pick up some color here and then drag it up here because I don't need it so stark in the distance. Now the perspective here is a little off because it makes it look like this line here is lower. This needs to be a nice gradual slope here to have the right perspective. So I'll have to work on that. And then later I'll come back and bring that white line up so that it, it connects more nicely with, because it really should be going up around the corner here and then just have the very slightest piece curving on around the edge, at least slightly. And the road can be dipping a little bit here, and that's so you don't have to see the, the yellow line going completely around the corner and the white line going clear around the corner because this is sort of the horizon point right here for the road, but this does need to come up slightly. I'll go back and go over that gold line a few more times as well.
This this little Grumbacher brush is a actually a size two, and that and it has a really nice edge to it since it's a bright straight across. It makes a real nice little fine line. So that's a good base for my road. There are so many colors in nature that make up a landscape. Um, <clears throat> but I tend to have, in my southwest paintings, I tend to stick to a few colors and combinations of those colors. And I'm going back and adding little dabs of Alzira and Crimson just for color. This side, in the photo, it's mostly just kind of a gray gravel. I think that I'll have it be a little bit of a grass look instead of just gravel. And grass, I don't use just plain green. I use a combination of hooker's green and yellow ochre. Sometimes throw in a little bit of black or um, burnt umber. Because that, that adds the shadow that I'm going to be needing. I, I like to lay down my darker detail first and then I go back and add the lighter. And these will not, of course, go all the way to the back because the further you go that way, the, the um, less detail you want to see in a painting. I also like to use warm gray, Grumbacher warm gray in my landscapes. It helps to blend my colors. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. And then I will <clears throat> come back and work some more on the, the background here and this part. I'll fix that little white line and make this a little crisper edge back that way. I used a really small detail brush to go over this just enough to make that perspective correct. I didn't film that part because it was very tedious. And... Um, but it was a little tiny brush. It's a round 18 zero. And I also touched up the very edges here to make that more of a straight line. I'll take out a little bit of this white line here. It's slightly too wide and shouldn't be that distinct. So I'll fill that in with some ground. I'll probably bring this down so that this hill appears to come down further, or at least be more gradual.
I know I'm going to be going back over this area right here because um, there's a little too much detail. That's back in the background. It looks too much like this area, so I'll kind of fade that out. But for now, I'm going to be working on this side. I'm pulling in a little bit of cerulean blue as I get back to the horizon line. This has a little bit of a grass effect up here in the front. This painting is now an example of what I talk about when I say that a painting will become what it wants to become. This originally was to be a painting of the cloud. I took that photo of that cloud in northern Arizona and I love that cloud. But, um, and the road was a part of the scene. It set off the cloud and it set an interesting perspective for the overall image. But as I painted, that's not really what happened. The road became the main focus of this painting. And the more I look at it, the more I really like just the road. And I'm afraid that if I add the cloud to it, the painting won't say what I wanted it to say. Um, it really has turned into a different painting than I originally started out to do. And um, I still love that cloud. I will put the cloud in a different scene, though. So there are still a few things with this painting that I'm going to do. I, I'm not going to do any more with the sky because at this point I want the, the focus to be the road. And I will um, I'll make a few changes to the um, landscape and then it's going to be finished. In this part of the painting, this is just about as wide back here as it is up front. And that is technically incorrect for perspective um, on this side of the painting, the grasses come near the road and then come further out. It's okay because grass can naturally grow closer and further away from the road. But this is the real dramatic piece of the painting that really sets the perspective. The eye goes right to that spot and follows it up around the corner. Therefore, I want this gravelly area and a little bit of grass and whatever's growing in here. I want that to be... A little bit better perspective. So I'm going to change this, bring this out this way a little bit so that this is a line that runs out this way. And that's all that I'm going to do with the painting and at that point it will be finished. I'm using yellow ochre, raw umber, hooker's green I may possibly put in and also warm gray. I'll just use my real small brush. The other thing I decided is I, I'm not adding the no passing dashes on here. I don't think it's really necessary. I, I really want the perspective of just a road going into who knows where to be the statement of the painting. That's why it's really important when you paint that you don't have a definite set idea when you start out. I, I always have a vague idea of what I want to paint, but um, what, what the painting becomes depends on what is coming out of your soul at the time. Whatever your feelings are, whatever you uh, might want to express on a conscious level, I wanted to paint a cloud. But from a subconscious level, that's just not what came out of me. And I don't fight that if I had really determined to stay with the cloud, um, I probably would have ended up with a painting that, that didn't quite work. So if you're starting out with one thing and it, it starts to take a different direction, go with that and I think you'll be quite happy.
Does it just to kind of um, let me know where where this line needs to start out here to go up? I see a little bit of a drip right here that I need to fix. If there wasn't that line at the base of the drip, I would leave it, but um, because it's all it's okay to have a slightly different color in in a spot, but that actually shows the edge of the drip, and I don't want that. Okay, all I have to do is sign it, and it's finished. <laughs>